Mast cells and autism. Is your child having allergy problems, mold problems? Has your functional medicine doctor talked to you about your child having mast cell issues? Brain inflammation and autism may result from a stimulation of mast cells, usually long-term stimulation of mast cells. Indirect evidence for the role of mast cells in autism comes from a large epidemiological study showing that autism is significantly associated with other diseases such as allergies, asthma, and eczema, all of which involve, you guessed it, mast cells. Let's learn some of the science of mast cells. Hi, I'm Dr. Teresa Lyons. I teach parents the cutting edge science of autism so that you can make the best decision for your child based on quality information. I'm gonna need my slides, so let me get on my laptop. Oh wait, before I forget, if you find this video to be helpful, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel to get the cutting edge scientific information about autism so that you can make the best decisions for your child based on quality information. Autism, mast cells, and we're also gonna get into fear response. Autism involves both genetic and environmental risk factors, and healing from autism is possible. Currently 9% of those diagnosed with autism in the US at age two, by age four, they are healed completely. Don't let that statistic kind of frighten you and feel like, oh, I didn't get it done within a certain time frame. That is just the published science. There's so many possibilities for healing. And that's what this video is about, letting you know the science as to how to get there. Immune system dysfunction is a potential link between environmental risk factors and autism. So let's talk about triggers a little bit. There are numerous gene mutations that have been reported in those with autism, but they explain less than 5% of the cases. So yes, genetics is important, but when you relate it to autism, there's not just one gene that triggers autism. Epigenetic mechanisms due to immune, autoimmune, or inflammatory processes may be involved. So trying to figure out, okay, how do you explain the other 95% of those cases? It's really more involved with environment and also epigenetics. Epigenetics is right at the cusp between genes and environment. And mast cells are involved for some with autism. I do want to preface this, that mast cells are not involved in everyone with autism. As you can see with genetics, it only explains 5% of the cases. Mast cells will only be involved in a certain percentage. We don't know what percentage. Scientists haven't been able to quantify that yet. So some children with autism, mast cells are involved and this video is relevant to you. And other kids, mast cells are not involved. Autism and brain inflammation. Brain inflammation has been considered to be part of the development of autism for some. Many times when there's a learning difficulty or some type of speech delay, many times it can be related to brain inflammation. Not always, but many times. And there's a number of inflammatory molecules such as interleukin, interleukin-1 and TNF, and another interleukin, number eight, they're actually increased in the brain and cerebral spinal fluid of many with autism. So this is where some scientists are being able to quantify, but again, you can't say something like, okay, this happens in 50% of those with autism. It's really hard to quantify that, but just know that there are inflammatory molecules that are upregulated and certainly interfere with brain functioning and optimal brain functioning. These molecules may derive from activation of microglia, and what the microglia is responsible for is innate immunity of the brain. So that's obviously very important, and if there is brain inflammation, many times the microglia are activated too much. Neuroinflammation in autism may result from stimulation of mast cells. So maybe your functional medicine doctor has started to talk to you about mast cell activation does impact brain inflammation. 
Okay, so how can doctors state this, right? You know, where, where is the science? Indirect evidence comes from large epidemiological studies showing that autism is significantly associated with certain diseases such as allergies and asthma, eczema, and all of those involved mast cells. So comorbidities with autism really give doctors and researchers a lot of information as to, okay, what else is going on in the body? So if mast cells are overactive in the entire body, right? So yes, you might have brain inflammation, but you might also have other comorbidities. So if your child has allergies and asthma and eczema, let's say all three of them, it's a good likelihood that mast cells are involved in a lot of your child's health issues. So you want to work with a doctor that has a good understanding of mast cells. Researchers have reported that the incidence of autism is 10 times higher than the general population in children who have mastocytosis. So that's just a hyperactive number of mast cells. So you can see there is research scientific evidence that can relate mast cells to autism. What are mast cells, right? Mast cells are found throughout the body and they're critical for the development of allergic reactions. So when you think allergies, you can also start to think mast cells. Mast cells regulate permeability of the blood brain barrier. That is super important. If you want your child to be able to focus and learn, you want their blood brain barrier to be tight. You do not want it to be permeable, right? The br it's important for the brain to be kept in as pure of an environment as possible, right? So we don't want brain inflammation. Mast cells regulate permeability of the blood brain barrier. So this is where brain inflammation, mast cells and autism start to come together. Mast cells act as sensors of environmental and psychological stress. And what happens when these cells sense different kinds of stress, they start to secrete danger signals. And this is what gets the biology going. It causes auto-inflammatory responses, and that has also been found to be increased in the serum of children with autism. So you can see how this science all relates back together. What do these mast cells do? Stimulated mast cells can secrete bioactive mediators such as histamine, tryptase, TNF. And histamine is something that is talked about a lot with children with autism. So usually people who have mast cell problems also have problems with histamines. These are people who have trouble eating fermented foods, right? They might have a, a big reaction, a lot of skin flushing, a lot of redness. Um, People who have high histamine levels um, have trouble eating different kinds of food, not just fermented foods, but different kinds of foods. Sometimes even different probiotics cause more of a histamine problem. Histamine is secreted by these mast cells. So when there is some type of allergy and inflammation, histamine a lot of times is what doctors pick up on because you can see the reaction of histamine in your actual body. Trying to see how TNF in, interacts with your body, you're likely not going to observe that with your eye. Here's some other mediators that are secreted by mast cells, tumor growth factor beta, and another interleukin. And so there, there is different research that can actually measure, you know, let's say the levels of interleukin 17. So you can relate this theory of mast cell activation to different elevated levels in the blood of children with autism. Mast cells are critical for different processes, not only allergic reactions, right? That's what many people think, mast cell allergic reactions, but it's also related to innate and acquired immunity, antigen presentation, and inflammation. Is that all? <laughs> so mast cells are also stimulated by bacteria, drugs, foods, fungi, mold, heavy metals, organophosphates, and viruses. So when you start to wonder, okay, 
how does my child have histamine and mast cell problems? This is when, when you work with a functional medicine doctor, you can start to get at the root cause. So this is a list of root causes. Many times when my clients come to me and let's say their child is a little bit on the older side, they have mast cell problems, histamine problems, allergies to everything, skin sensitivities to everything. Many times that comes from long-term mold exposure, typically in their house. Mast cells aren't overstimulated, let's say, with just a short exposure to bacteria or food or, or mold, heavy metals, things like that. A lot of times when your child is starting to show mast cell problems, it's because of a long-term exposure to something on this list. Again, obviously work with your functional medicine doctor, but this is a list of what the root causes are. This is what you want to address. Yes, there are different supplements that can reduce inflammation. That is great for the short term, but for the long term, right, when you want your child to be happy and healthy and off to college, this is what you want to focus on. Mediators are derived from mast cells and they can activate microglia and that causes localized inflammation, which then leads to the symptoms of autism. And again, the symptoms of autism, how you get diagnosed with autism is based upon observed behaviors. So a lot of times all this biology and chemistry is happening and it could be happening for a year or two before you start to see actual observable behaviors that then could be diagnosed as autism. Triggers of mast cells can reach the hypothalamus from the nasal cavity or through the brain lymphatics. So this is environmental exposure. If your child's breathing something that is causing some type of allergic response, this is how just breathing an allergen can cause issues in the brain. The body is connected. It is not one isolated area. So if you're breathing something in, yes, it could actually impact brain function. Mast cell derived mediators, especially cytokines, can increase the permeability of the, of the gut brain barrier, the blood brain barrier, and that allows toxins to cross into the brain. And that is not what we want, right? Because when the toxins go into the brain, it activates the cells of the microglia and that starts to disrupt how the brain is connected. And that happens especially in the amygdala. So let's get into the amygdala a little bit more. The amygdala is related to processing fear and stress adversely affects learning and motivation. So when stress and fear are involved, it impacts behaviors. It impacts the ability to display competency and to actually enjoy learning and enjoy life. Children with autism sometimes have no fear of dangerous situations. So like um, walking across a wall, right? Or walking across the street without looking. Um, sometimes they have exaggerated fear response to like a fan or, or certain noises, even certain images. So sometimes children with autism have no fear and then other times it's exaggerated fear. This reaction may possibly be rooted in the lowering of the fear response. The fear response, all right, what is that? Children with autism show an initial excess of neurons in the amygdala with a reduction in adulthood. Whereas controls that do not have autism, they have the exact opposite. They have fewer neurons in childhood, but then a greater number in adulthood. These differences in brain volume and how the brain is connected is important in emotional processing. And so that could be at the root of this fear response that many with autism exhibit. So this is how you can really relate environmental exposures down to different specific behaviors relating to fear. There's a lot of biology and a lot of chemistry involved, but this is how science can connect all of those dots. Some conclusions. 
Stimulation of brain mast cells and or microglia by a combination of environmental and stress triggers may disrupt the way your child's brain is connected in the amygdala. And that can then change the normal fear threshold into observable quote unquote autism behaviors. So you can see a lot of things happen to happen on the microscopic level before you can actually observe these autism behaviors. When you see behaviors, don't just blame them. Don't just say, oh, that's autism. That's, that's just their behavior. Behaviors many times signify health issues. And if you're working with a really good doctor, they can understand the science, right? So they understand the behavior is the downstream effect. Okay, let me start looking at bacteria. Let me start looking at mold. Let me start looking, you know, they have different lab tests that they can run to understand the biology and chemistry of your child, which relates to the behaviors. So please don't write off behaviors and, and just say, ah, that's just autism. Your gut is probably telling you something. Mm, those behaviors, they signify something. They do. Listen to your intuition. Work with a functional medicine doctor to ensure that your child is truly healthy, right? We want truly healthy, not just some, uh, yeah, they seem to be healthy. We ran a few tests, yeah, no. Look at that list of root causes that I had earlier in this presentation and make sure that your child is clear of all of them. That is how you work towards being truly healthy, which then turns into truly happy. And that I know is what you want. A happy and healthy child who loves learning, loves doing things, getting out in life, having fun, smiling and laughing. This is the science that could help you get there. And here are some references.